that scene in Oppenheimer. I know everyone's talking about that scene, that vulgar scene, you know. How dare Nolan show this? How could they film this? What was the point of it? Let's calm down a little and let's try and break it down. What does it really mean? Now, I watched this movie in 70mm in IMAX. I loved it. It's one of the best movies I've watched. It stays with you and that's what I love about a movie. But anyway, those are my views about the movie. Do go and watch it regardless. But let's talk about the Gita lines. As we know, Oppenheimer recites twice about Gal. I am now become death, the destroyer of worlds. And we hear this line twice. We hear it during the sensual scene with Tatlock and Oppenheimer. And then we hear it again when he sees that bomb detonate and he sees what it does and it, it terrifies him completely. I've been thinking about making a video on this because I've seen so many people say this is anti-Hindu, this is wrong, how can Nolan do this? And I just want to say calm down and just chill out a little. Don't be so defensive because there's no need to be. It's just a movie and understand the movie completely before you start ranting on TikTok or anywhere else. But anyway, everyone's free to express their views and I'm going to express mine. First of all, he talks about God, the destroyer of worlds. And in two ways he expresses it. So let's look at the bit where he's having that sensual experience with Tatlock. And basically, if anyone has done the deed, you know that at the peak of that deed, you reach a place of silence, of a complete dissolution of all senses. And it's similar to Samadhi. And if you've read Osho or listened to Osho, you know he has a book that literally talks about this. But I would say if you still think this was bad, then read that book before you start commenting on my video. But it's interesting because if you look at that, the peak of the sensual experience, there is a small death that happens. You literally die. The senses die within you. They dissolve completely. And this is exactly what happens in the sensual experience. Now, the same thing is what happens at the end. He sees the bomb detonate, he sees what happens and he kind of foreshadows what could occur and it terrifies him. And the same way it destroys the world. It's for him, it's a destroyer of world. In the same way, the sensual experience destroys the world around him because you go into that peak sensual experience that's similar to Samadhi. You see both ways where death is there and it's a destroyer of worlds. But the only difference is one is, is from pleasure. The other one is through pain and suffering. So you see both parallels. Now, I would even go further to say it may not even be any of those. I may be reading too much into it and it could just be plain or simple. That's the way Oppenheimer gets aroused is through an intellectual exercise. Tatlock understands it, gets him to read Sanskrit, knows that would get him aroused and they can then do the deed. It could be just as simple as that. So <laughs> then there's no need to look into it. But the one thing I do want to mention, I don't know if this scene actually happened in real life, in Oppenheimer's life. And if it did, then who are we to say that's wrong and it shouldn't have been shown? It's a significant moment and we need to understand why it's a significant moment. Obviously, we know later on, there's a spoiler now, so if you not watched the movie, I would say stop. Or if you don't care, you've read the book, you understand what's going to happen. Tatlock dies and that's also what happens because it becomes so absorbed in another act of completing the task he has to do in creating the bomb. He forgets about her and she ends up dying. You could see that as it destroys his world. And we know that it, it completely destroys him. And that one person has such a significant part in his life. So we need to understand that as well. But anyway, but is it anti-Hindu? Should we be furious at this? We are Sanatanis. How dare Hollywood try to bring Hinduism down. Look at how it disrespects our Gita. Calm down, literally. It's not disrespecting the Gita. In fact, I would say this one film has made the Gita a little bit more popular because once you bring it into popular culture, people start wanting to know more about it. So indirectly, Nolan 
has made sure that we think about that line. And that line is always thought about. I will tell you, after I've watched that movie, that line has been running in my mind. The other thing I want to mention is that what we see from Oppenheimer is how he grows. And the film is a massive spiritual tale. When I talk about how you see in the beginning how Oppenheimer is full of stress, depression, anxiety. Guess who had that in the beginning of the Bhagavad Gita? Arjun. And literally Arjun has the same thing. And therefore, we see in Oppenheimer, when it gets to the courtroom scenes that happen, look how calm and collected he is. Look how calm and collected he is when people backstab him, when people are playing games with him, when people are trying to sabotage his character. Look how calm he is. Look how he doesn't react. He knows that in the end, the truth always wins. And he literally acts upon Sri Krishna's words in the Gita. And I think that's significant. The other thing that I will finally end with is the cultural difference in terms of books. Now, obviously, when we have books in the East coming from the Indian origin, we respect the books and we place it on our forehead because it's Vidya and we fully respect it. But let's understand that Oppenheimer and Nolan are from the West. And they are not going to have the same type of practice that we would have. And literally that's what it is, a ritualistic practice. And it just shows our reverence towards knowledge. But people like Oppenheimer and Nolan do not live in that world, do not live in that cultural context. So it's unfair to superimpose our cultural kind of traditions onto somebody else, especially of the past when it's already happened. I think we need to be a bit more reasonable. That's my views on it. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Do you have more points to add? And at the end of the day, all I know is that we've got to talk about 